Great. Well, nice to meet him. Nice to see you all. It's really a, a privilege and a pleasure to welcome my friend Vladimir back to the UK. Uh, the conflict is a, a pivotal moment. Ukraine is bravely defending itself against Russian aggression. But at this moment, it's been really good for us to have the time to talk together in private about the support that the UK is giving and how we can make sure that that support is not just here for today, but into the future as well to ensure that Ukraine and its people triumph, not just on the battlefield militarily, uh, but also stand up for those values of freedom, democracy and the rule of law that we all hold very dear. We've had some very good conversations uh, and Vladimir, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much. First of all, for me and for our team, it's a privilege that you host us here today, Rishi. And thank you, especially, especially you and your government for supporting us. Really, at this moment, like you said, uh, the moment of challenges, the moment for us, for our society, our people, especially for our soldiers, moment is tough, difficult, but anyway, um, but we need success, and I'm happy that in this way we are in way of preparing very important counteroffensive steps. You are with us, together with us, uh, all Great Britain, you and your government. It's very important. So thank you very much for all support. Of course, with uh, with you know all this b best attitude to our people from your people but of course we concentrate on on military support and thank you very much for this package that you prepared great huge really uh, what can save the lives for our people thank you so much well thanks Vladimir. Right, we'll take some questions, yes. Mr. Yeah. President, uh, you made it very clear you need more advanced weapons more quickly. Is it fair to say that you cannot begin your new counteroffensive until you get them? And Prime Minister, today the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov has warned that Russia views the new UK military package extremely negatively. Does that worry you? Well, you want to... Yes, um, thank you very much for your question. We really need some, some more time not too much. We'll be ready, you know, in some time. I, I, I want to be very honest with you. I, I can't share with you some days. I, I just don't want to prepare. Not, not for our friends. There are no secrets from our friends, but there are some secrets from, from our neighbors. That, that's why we have to, to prepare. And, and I'm here not only because of this support, but of course, including this support, it will help us to be more strong. But also to thank you to, to your people, to, to government. It's very, very important now when some countries, not all of, you know, of, of the world, but some countries are near with us from first days of full-scale war and I'm thankful that Great Britain is one of these countries. Yeah. Uh, look, it's interesting to hear from the Kremlin. What I'd say is you know, Russia has conducted an unprovoked and illegal attack on the Ukrainian people. It is carrying out horrific war crimes, and something Blodder and I have been speaking about, uh, just awful treatment of its citizens. And as we said right at the beginning, the UK will remain steadfast in supporting Ukraine and its people to defend itself against that aggression. When Vladimir was last here some months ago, I talked then about the provision of long-range weapons because of the capability that they would offer. Uh, I'm pleased we're the first country to be able to do that, and I'm pleased that they will make a difference to the defense of Ukraine. And we will keep providing support, as you've Thank seen you. today, with long-range offensive drones, for example, uh, more anti-aircraft, uh, and there will be further support to come. And that's what we've been talking about today. But I think it's important for the Kremlin to also know that we're not going away. Right? We are here for the long term. We remain steadfast in wanting to defend Ukraine, not just now to reclaim its rightful territory, but also to ensure that Ukraine has the means to defend itself into the future as well. Uh, and that's another topic of conversation that we've had today is about the security arrangements that we should put in place amongst allied countries for Ukraine for the long term to ensure that it can uh, defend itself and provide effective deterrence against future Russian aggression. Uh, President Zelensky, when you were last in the UK, uh, you made a plea for Western fighter jets. Um, how are negotiations going? And Prime Minister, where does the UK stand on that matter? Mm. 
Thank you very much. Today we spoke about the jets, very important topic for us because we can't control the sky, you know it. So I think you know everything deeply because we're real partners. You, Rishi knows all the details, what's going on on our battlefield. Thank you very much. And uh, we want to create this uh, jets coalition and I'm very positive with it. We spoke about it and I see that in the closest time you will hear some, I think, very important decisions, but we have, we have to work a little bit more on it. Yes, look, we, we are going to be a key part of the coalition of countries that provides yeah. that support to Vladimir and Ukraine. Now, it is not a straightforward thing, as Vladimir and I have been discussing, to make build up that fighter uh, combat aircraft capability. It's not just the provision of planes, it's also the training of pilots and all the logistics that go alongside that. Now, the UK can play a big part of that. One thing we will be doing, starting actually relatively soon, is uh, training of Ukraine. Ukrainian pilots, and that's something that we've discussed yes. today. We're ready to implement those plans uh, in, in relatively short order, which will mean that we're training Ukrainian uh, citizens to become absolutely combat ready aircraft pilots, uh, and particularly whether it comes to NATO tactics as well, because that's an important part of the long term relationship between our countries. So we've had very good productive discussions on that today. Other countries are involved. I'm talking to those leaders. I'll be doing more of that this week in my international engagement, and we're very keen to build that coalition of countries to give uh, Vladimir and his people the aircraft support that they need. My question to President. Uh, yes. I would like to ask you, is it satisfied you with this Eurotour? And I understand that this is part of the preparation for Vilnius. What are your expectations from the NATO summit in Vilnius? Дуже дякую. Пріоритет був наші наступальні дії. Я дуже задоволений нашими досягненнями і домовленостями. І дуже дякую. Ріші дуже дякую. І була гарна зустріч з Джорджем, Олаф, Еммануель. І сьогодні в Великої Британії. І а, дійсно важливі потужні оборонні пакети. Ось що. Ось які є домовленості. Це номер один. Ми говоримо про G7. І тут дуже важлива позиція кожної з цих країн. Дуже важливо, щоб ця позиція була об'єднана. Ми говоримо про коаліцію літаків. І я прошу Ріші. Та позиція, яка щодо коаліції літаків є у нього, щоб він допоміг мені мати таку спільну позицію і інших лідерів Великої Сімки. І я думаю, що це найголовніші речі. Ми також говоримо про Альянс, про Вільнюс, але поки що, якщо можна, це буде між нами. I said only good things about you. I, I agree. All I say is I agree. <laughs> no, thank you, Rich. Fantastic. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, cool.